Okay, today we're going to run over a few issues concerning uh, the costing of products. Um, this is really for review. The candidate will um, recall that joint products uh, occur when two or more products have a common processing path, so it's impossible to um, definitively be able to separate out the production costs along the way that they share. It was only It's only when they go their own ways at the point of separation that we can uh, talk about distinguishing the um, products themselves and the process costs that may subsequently take place. When we have such a case, then there are different ways of being able to apportion the common costs, the costs connected with the production when they were traveling uh, a common path. It can be the market value that's uh, subsequently realized um, based on selling the different products into the market, or it can be done based on some physical measurement, number of units or weight or, or volume, or uh, which is a follow on from the market value is net realizable value. In other words, what its final sales value would be less the incremental processing costs. Um, we also need to distinguish byproducts from joint products because they also um, emerge from the a common production process and they also bring some value to the business. However, the amount that they generate is not really considered to be important. It's more incidental and therefore we could see that the byproducts, the, the cash that they do generate, uh, reduces effectively reduces our production costs. They're deducted from the production cost, much in the same way that the scrap value is deducted from production costs as well. It's not something that one plans to do in its uh, in, in their own right. The byproduct is not a principal product of the business. Now, joint processing and further processing. Let's have a look at the. Uh, it is a, a case of relevant uh, costing to determine whether or not we should immediately sell a, uh, a product when it emerges at the point of separation or whether it should be further processed. And here uh, we can see that if we have three products and they have costs at the point of separation that, which have been split up between them as shown here, um, whether we want to sell them at some immediate price or further process them so as to achieve a post-processing price depends not on what the cost is at separation because this is already considered to be a historical cost. It's forward-looking. Let's uh, reason this one through. Look at product A and let's determine whether or not it's worth selling <coughs> product A immediately for 27000 or processing it at a further cost of 5000 and subsequently selling it for 30000 We can see here in this case that the choice actually is to realize 27000 or to realize, after further processing, 30000 minus 5000 These two should be taken together because we have a choice now. We dig into our pockets for 5000 to get 30000 that will give us a net 25000 uh, benefit from further processing so it seems that it's better to immediately sell for 27000 the same uh, logic occurs for product b we can sell immediately for 28000 would we do better if we were to spend 5000 and get 32000 the net cost here 32 minus 5 is equal to 27,000, which is less than 28,000, which would be the proceeds from an immediate um, sale. So it seems that, again, immediate sale would be beneficial. In the case of C, we get 45,000 for an immediate sale, but if we spend 4,000, we can achieve a post-processing price of 50,000. That gives us a net benefit of 46,000. We would do better with further processing in the case of product C. 
Then there's the issue of service costing. Services uh, distinguish themselves from products in the following way. Um, they're heterogeneous, they're intangible, they are perishable, and the service is created, it's produced and consumed uh, at the same time. So this is just a, a way of thinking about how services distinguish themselves from products. Cost units. Uh, in service industries, finding the appropriate cost unit, what to measure the cost of in order to uh, uh, track one's performance is uh, can be challenging. Um, we also need to think about composite units. What are composite units? Uh, for example, uh, if we have the uh, cost of student lunches, this would be, for example, if we were to feed one student, a hundred lunches, as strange as that may sound, or one, a hundred students each getting a hundred, uh, one lunch, it would amount to the same thing in terms of volume, uh, in the same way that if we have to budget for uh, man days, we may have a certain number of people available and a certain number of days available and it's the composite the combination of the two which allows us to budget and to determine the costs of a typical man day one person working for one day so keep in mind the meaning of composite costs now decision making is an important and interesting area in uh, management accounting um, we'll start with the uh, break even uh, concept. Uh, this is based on the marginal costing system that we discussed earlier. In other words, marginal costing allows us to separate out variable costs from fixed costs. By doing so, if we know the variable costs that are related to a product and we deduct the variable costs from selling price, then we have something called contribution. This has been uh, defined and discussed earlier. The contribution amount generated by a business is the amount that would be, can be put towards covering fixed costs. And this allows us, therefore, to be able to uh, determine what the break-even level is of a business. Let's just look at a simple numerical example which will illustrate this um, in, in a very neat way. Take a manufacturing company that has the following cost card. Direct materials 45, direct labor 18, and variable production overheads of $9. In other words, the total variable production costs $72 distribution and selling costs which are variable in nature is another two dollars and we sell the product for a hundred and twenty dollars now the question here is based on these numbers how can we determine the break-even point of the company first we have to define break-even that would be the uh, point uh, the level of of sales achieved by the company so that the profit of the company is just equal to zero. It just covers its overall costs. And the way we can uh, determine this break-even level is by recognizing that the total fixed cost to the company would be 16,500 plus 7,000. That's 23,500. That's the total fixed cost. And now the key uh, item that we have to calculate is the contribution per unit. What's the contribution per unit? It's the selling price, $120 per unit, minus the variable costs per unit. The variable costs are these two um, costs here, 72 plus 2, or $74. If we deduct $74 from 120 we arrive at $46 per unit, and this will be our contribution, 46. That means for every unit that we sell, 
we end up with $46 of cash which is generated from the sale after deducting the variable costs from the selling price. And this $46 can go towards the coverage of our total fixed costs. Now, of course, $46, one unit alone, barely impacts our total fixed costs. So the question becomes, how many units X do we have to produce such that 46 times X is equal to 23,500? Well, the X will be found by dividing 23,500 by 46, and the answer is 511. And we can check this by taking 511 times 46 dollars, and the multiplication of the two gives us 23,506. It's just at that level, a contribution achieved, which just manages to cover our fixed costs with virtually no profit left over.